I wouldn't argue Wind Waker is the best because of its gameplay, art style, or nostalgia factor, although I do love all those things about it. Wind Waker is the best at a very specific category that a lot of games, even other Zelda games, don't achieve as much. And for me, that would be its mythic quality. Wind Waker is an incredibly mythopoetic game. It's constantly drawing on the deep wells of primordial storytelling, fairy tales, folklore, legend from across the world, and it turns them into something new in a way that I think especially resonates with both Japanese and Celtic traditions. Other Zelda games do this quite a bit, but I think Wind Waker does this the most. You can correct me if you think I'm wrong on that. Let me run down the list of what we find in Wind Waker. I'm aware that other Zelda games have some of these elements in them, but my contention is that they don't have the same degree of mythical density, the same sense of deep lore. First off, the sword out of the stone is an obvious legendary motif, which we know from the story of Arthur. But there's a broader recurring Celtic legend uh, that is called the quest for the sword of light. And Wind Waker, as well as other Zelda games, are just a reiteration of this story. In the different variations of this legend, a young hero is bound to a quest to find a magical sword of light, which can repel evil in some sense, and it's usually in order to defeat a particular evil wizard or giant of some kind. Along the way, he needs to complete a variety of important tasks that will help him achieve the sword, and in doing these tasks, he might be helped by talking animals, a beautiful maiden, or even and this is in the legends, a weird small man who dresses in green. Of course, for the Irish, this would be a leprechaun, but for Zelda fans, this would be someone very different. Look at this picture. It's from 1916, uh, and I just got it off of Wikipedia. If this doesn't archetypally count as the Legend of Zelda, I don't know what does. Now, what makes Wind Waker feel so much more primordially mythical than even other Zelda games? So, in Wind Waker, instead of just your stock fantasy forested landscape, you instead have a scattered archipelago. Uh, the inhabitants of these islands are the descendants of the survivors of a worldwide deluge. That's already a concept found in almost every mythology worldwide, presumably because, yeah, it actually happened. I mean, it's in the Bible, people. Come on. So that's about as ancient and primordial as it gets, right? Then basing the gameplay on sailing around this magical archipelago full of haunted wonders and treasures, I think means it's just designed to trigger deep, cultural memories of people, both from Japan, an archipelago of haunted wonders, and the North Atlantic islands of Britain and Ireland, and Iceland, who, funnily enough, have a lot of ancient stories about traveling between islands and encountering different magical creatures there. The island-hopping setting of Wind Waker reminds us of uh, recent stories like Ursula Wynn's Tales of Earthsea or C.S. Lewis's Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Uh, both of these are very richly mythopoetic fantasy novels, and they in turn are inspired by things like Homer's Odyssey or St. Brendan's Voyage from medieval Celtic legend. It's worth noting, in the story of St. Brendan's Voyage, the monk and his men encounter things like giant fish, talking birds, an island with a pillar of fire streaming upward. Not to mention in other similar Irish sea journey stories, the heroes encounter things like 
islands full of magical women, or islands that operate on different time frames from the rest of the world. So that's just the setting. Uh, but when you get down into the nitty-gritty of different elements of Wind Waker, you find they all feel very much at home in classic mythology and folklore. The idea that a hero needs to acquire magic artifacts that control the natural elements, magic boots, magic arrows, most notably here, the Wind Waker itself, uh, the idea that a hero must gain control over winds and then use these to defeat terrible threats to humanity, that goes back as far as the Mesopotamian myth of Marduk and Tiamat. Uh, you have these wind gods in Wind Waker that, that represent you know, different kinds of wind. Uh, you have a cave of wind that needs to be explored. All of these are very, very ancient ideas. Uh, what else do you have in Wind Waker that kind of fits into this mythopoetic mode? You've got a magic stone that you can speak at far distances with. Uh, you have bardic companions whose music uh, allows you to unlock the mysteries of ancient temples. You have a tribe of people who are half bird, half men. It's exactly the sort of thing you see in both Greek and Celtic myths. Uh, you've got talking fish, you've got talking trees, you've got talking boats. All of these have precedent in myth. Uh, you have not just fairies, but a queen of the fairy realm. You have a giant bird that carries off people in its claws, takes girls away to a castle ruled over by a giant sorcerer living at the top of a high tower. That is the kind of fairy tale that is has been told for centuries, and you can find examples of uh, different versions of that or, or those different components, you know, in all kinds of lands and places. Uh, one idea that I find especially interesting is uh, that which we see here in Wind Waker, an ancient king who has been transformed. Here he's been transformed into a talking boat while he sails in his ship form above the seas, which is kind of somehow his externalized soul. Um, in the shape of a Kirin, by the way, in, from Asian mythology. Uh, meanwhile, while he's, he's sailing above, his ghost dwells deep down below in a castle that is frozen in time. That might remind us a little bit of the uh, Celtic legend of the city of Is. Uh, it's, it's similar to an Atlantis-type story. Um, but the idea was that a, a specific city was was destroyed and cast into the waves, and that when the waters are clear, you can you can look down into the waters and see uh, the old city, you know, sort of remaining down there. Um, I'm I'm not sure if Wind Waker ever really explains exactly what the relationship is between the king's ghost and his boat form, or even between the Hyrule Castle and the Tower of the Gods. That is somehow floating above it. If the Tower of the Gods came from before Hyrule, then I don't know how it emerges right above the castle in the waters. That, that doesn't really make sense to me, but it still definitely feels mythically powerful. The Tower of the Gods is obviously reminiscent of the Tower of Babel. It's filled with these golems made with a kind of ancient antediluvian technology uh, by presumably a trio of goddesses who rule over this realm. Uh, that's all very ancient and archetypal. And the, the golems are maybe a little bit inspired by clay jomon figurines from Japan, the dogu, uh, and these exist to test Link's might as he goes through the tower. So, so all of this is, is very, very ancient stuff. Uh, transformed kings, kingdoms under a curse, kingdoms under water, gigantic towers. Uh, you, I don't think you see a similar kind of density of mythical concept or, or superimposition of primordial storytelling in, in a lot of video games in, in recent years. Uh, so all of this gives a weightiness to Wind Waker, ironically, despite its cutesy exterior. There's a primeval quality to the world building that you just don't see quite as often these days, especially in fantasy. Part of what makes something like Zelda or The Lord of the Rings or, to me, even Adventure Time, 
strike a chord is that these stories and games aren't just about warriors wandering around getting into fights with magical creatures. All of that is involved, but they also pull deep details out of some of the most ancient myths and folklore that we have a record of. A lot of Dungeons and Dragons style fantasy today feels really superficial and frankly not very magical because you can tell the current storytellers and designers haven't bothered to research very much into medieval lore or ancient myth making. Or if they have, they still feel like they need to update it to make it make sense in some kind of ironic or modern millennial sensibility sort of way. And so that effort that they put in to have things make sense means that it loses a lot of the fairy tale logic or the way that they try to use magic or fairy tale logic feels too regimented, too hollow. They just lack some kind of je ne sais quoi or some kind of primordial resonance. A lot of this stuff, fantasy coming out today, doesn't trigger our blood memories, you know, some kind of like deep uh, sensation that we get when we hear a story that just taps into our deep belief about who we are or our deep you know, memory of who our ancestors used to be. I think that's true for recent Warcraft or Magic the Gathering or D&D or Elder Scrolls or even recent Zelda games in a lot of ways. I don't feel like they're, they're triggering that, that ancient sense, whatever that is. They all just feel like they have less soul, less mythopoetic reverence than they once did. And part of what makes Wind Waker so fun is that it doesn't just root its creativity in some medieval or ancient past. It also has these flourishes that feel much more 18th century. You know, you have telescopes, batons, pirates, uh, some archaic wooden submarines. Um, those are fun, but those seem more stylistic over what is essentially a, a mythical core to all of the main ideas of the game. So all that to say, with Wind Waker, under the cell-shaded veneer, we find so many concepts that have been told and retold in stories across the earth for thousands of years. And these are kind of precious memories that many of us, I think, have forgotten or have never heard in the first place. Thankfully, the Japanese, of all people, are remembering these stories for us Westerners, and they're retelling it to us. Wind Waker isn't the only game that does something like this, but I think in its own childlike way, it strikes deeper into a sense of the mythical than most stories that we see in this century, especially fantasy ones.